This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Hello, welcome back to another Make Thrift Buy, the show where you send in items that you've seen on the internet that are either mass produced, super expensive, or just plain weird. And then I do my best to recreate them. A lot of you really liked me taking on the problematic Wish app last episode. So today I'm back to tackle another Wish item. Pow, pow, pow. So I had a bunch of that silky material left over from making the top from the previous episode. And if you recall, I wanted to make shorts out of that leftover material. And the shorts I wanted to make are also an item from Wish, which is listed on the app as a two-piece set. Sorry, not two-piece set. Sexy women pajamas, mini tank crop top, shorts set, sleepwear nightmare. Nightmare? <laughs> Nightwear, it is a nightmare. Yeah, that. Anyway, that sells for just $6. Worryingly cheap, especially because I've made shorts before, they're not the easiest things to make, and this two-piece set being sold for only $6 worries me a lot because it means that the person or people making them are getting paid next to nothing. When you also factor in materials cost, the cost of transporting those materials, and that the company obviously will be making a profit as well. <sighs> So let's try and make this one for ourselves. Let's begin. All right, so quickly recapping last episode, I got this black slip from a thrift store and turned it into a top. Last episode, I said it cost $2, but I accidentally got that wrong. It was only 50 cents, which I only remembered when I rewatched the video where I bought it. And I didn't want to get any angry tweets if anyone did happen to notice. So I'm mentioning that here. Okay, I wanted to also make use of this bottom part of the slip by turning it into shorts. To turn this into shorts, the basic pattern that I'm gonna be using is one that I've actually already made when I made shorts for another video. And to see how I made that pattern, let's go back to the past, shall we? To make this pattern, I copied a pair of high-waisted shorts that I already owned and that fit me really well. To copy these shorts, I folded the shorts in half at the front, traced around them onto paper with about an inch seam allowance all around, folded them in half the other way, and then traced around the back in the same way, then cut these pieces out. This gave me a front and a back piece. You'll notice that the back piece has a longer bit here, which gives you more room for your butt. <laughs> yes, I'm a dork. Back to the present. So I pulled those pattern pieces out again and I'm not going to add any pockets because I definitely don't have enough fabric. So the pocket pieces are going away. So I laid out the front and the back pattern pieces just to get an idea of how much fabric the shorts will require. Hmm. And I wasn't super sure if I was gonna have enough fabric at this point. Because this fabric used to be the bottom of a dress, it's in a loop. So I cut it open down one of the seams so I could open it into one layer and get a better idea of how much fabric I had. I then traced my old pattern out again onto another piece of paper, but I modified it a little. I did this because my last shorts were fitted and required a zipper, whereas I don't want a zipper for this pair. I'll be doing an elastic waistband instead. And because of that, I'm going to have to make the waist at least big enough for the shorts to go up over my hips, because if I don't, I won't be able to get the shorts on. And I've done this before. So I did increase the waist about an inch, which is 2.5 centimeters on both the front and the back. And I also squared up the edges of the pattern here, turning the outside corner into a 90 degree angle so that I would use my fabric more efficiently. Cause as you saw before, there's not a lot of it. And then I played some Tetris with my pattern pieces and the fabric. It was then that I realized if I use this pattern as it is, I was only gonna get about three quarters of a pair of shorts out of the fabric. But then I remembered that the old pattern had included an extra one inch allowance for darts. So I could get rid of that because these shorts aren't going to be fitted. And I also realized that my satiny fabric is quite stretchy, which also means I can reduce the width. Because of that, I was able to reduce the sides of both the front and back patterns by about one and a half inches each, which I did by folding them inwards one and a half inch like this. And now now the pattern pieces fit, hallelujah. Because I've done this, the shorts aren't going to be as flowy as I would have liked, but fingers crossed this will still work. The waist is still about five inches bigger than my natural waistline measurement, which is fine because I'm gonna be elasticating the waist. I want it to be bigger, but because it's stretchy, I should still be able to pull this over my hips. Wish me luck. So using these pattern pieces, First, I cut out my back pieces by placing the pattern on the fabrics fold, which I did to minimize fabric waste, and I cut around it. Here's my back pieces. I then cut this in half straight down the middle to give me two back pieces. I then also tried to do the same thing with the front pieces, but I ran out of fabric. I just didn't quite have enough fabric to cover the crotch piece. But do you see all this extra fabric up here? It's not gonna be as pretty, but I'm gonna use that and I'm going to attach it onto the fabric where I need it. So I cut off that extra fabric and I sewed it on down here. 
In order to get a nice clean seam, I pinned it onto the main fabric, right sides together, and I sewed it on like this. Now, this fabric being satin was also a bit of a nightmare to work with. Satins and silky fabrics are difficult. And when I sewed it using no stabilizer of any kind, the stitching looked pretty janky. So to fix this, and I ended up doing this for all seams in this project, every single edge that I was gonna sew on, I placed a piece of one-sided fusible interfacing down on the edge that I'm gonna be sewing on. And then I put a heatproof cloth over the top, minus silk organza, but you could use an old t-shirt. And then I ironed it down, sticking the interfacing to the edge of the fabric. And when I sewed this together, it gave me much nicer looking stitches and seams. All right, I was then able to use this to cut out my two front pieces. Again, I cut it out with the edge placed on the fold in order to save fabric. And I also cut my front piece straight down the middle to give myself two symmetrical front pieces. To construct the shorts, first I needed to sew each front piece right sides together and each back piece right sides together, both all the way down the curvy edge. Once I'd done that, I cut away the extra seam allowance so that the interfacing wouldn't make the seams all stiff feeling. And then I also pressed the seams with my iron. <laughs> and at this point, I remembered that I had interfacing that I should have been using instead of the white one because it not only matched the color of my fabric, but it was a bit stretchy too. So I should have been using this right from the start. The white interfacing, although you're not gonna be able to see it on the outside of the finished shorts, it won't look so great from the inside. Here's a tip from me. If you're following this tutorial yourself, please use interfacing that matches the color and stretchiness of your fabric. Do as I say, not as I do. Anyway, I'll be using this black interfacing on all of the edges and seams from here on out. So the next step is to place the front and back pieces right sides together on top of each other. And there's not really any better way to say this. I spread the crotch of the front piece out like this. And I placed the back piece on top of it right sides together spread out the crotch as well. <laughs> Basically, I matched up the front and back pieces crotches. I held the two pieces of fabric together with these sewing clips, and then I sewed the crotch together like this. The next step is to sew the front and back pieces together at the sides. So I matched up the sides of the front and back piece. I am adding interfacing first, just like I have for all of the seams before sewing, and then I sewed them together like this. By the way, I am using these clips rather than pins because I'm working with a delicate fabric and didn't want to poke a lot of holes through it. Now that they're basically shorts, it's time for the moment of truth. Do they fit over my hips? Yes, thank goodness I was able to easily get them on. Thank you fabric for having some stretch. So the next step is gonna be adding elastic around the waist to hold them up. First, I needed to make a casing for the elastic. So after applying some more interfacing to the top of the shorts and with the shorts inside out, I folded the top of the shorts down just a bit more than the width of the elastic that I'm gonna be using. And then I sewed almost all the way around the casing at the top of the shorts, leaving a small gap to insert the elastic through. So while I was sewing this, my sewing machine was being very naughty because my fabric is both slippery and stretchy and it didn't enjoy this at all, even with the interfacing on the fabric. But it started behaving when I switched to using using a walking foot attachment and by going around the casing first with a straight stitch and then following it up with a zigzag stitch. Then I measured this piece of elastic around my waist, around where the shorts are going to sit and I pulled the elastic a little bit tight so the shorts will stay up but not too tight that it's uncomfortable and then I chopped it to this length, adding half an inch to the length before cutting so that I can sew the elastic into a loop after it's inserted into the shorts. Putting a safety pin into one end of the elastic, I pushed it through the gap in the casing around the waist and I threaded the elastic all the way around the casing till it came out the other end. And then I removed the safety pin and sewed the ends of the elastic closed. And finally, I sewed over that little gap in the casing. And with that, I am done. So how did I go? I didn't expect these to look as nice as they do after I had to make those pattern pieces a lot smaller to fit on the fabric. So I'm really happy with how they turned out. They're absolutely perfect to wear as actually quite luxurious looking summer pajamas. My conclusion is...
Now, this is definitely a harder project than the previous episode, the top. You will need some sewing experience to try this, but shorts are really not that difficult to make. And if you're a beginning, sewer or you're struggling with shorts, I would recommend using the free downloadable Madeline Bloomers by Colette. It'll help you wrap your head around shorts and pants making and help you feel more confident about trying out your own patterns. So in the end, I was able to make both this silky top and shorts out of just one thrifted slip. And this was the total fabric waste at the end. Pretty good, right? And these scraps will be going right into my scrap box to be used in other projects. This video is supported by Squarespace. And beginning sewers, wait around for a bit because I have some good tips in here for you as well. I've been using Squarespace myself for over a year now and I love the beautiful website that I made entirely using Squarespace. So this is my website. It serves as my landing page for all things me on the internet. And yes, I know how that sounds, but you gotta brand yourself if you do anything creative on the internet. Anyway, it's been so useful having this website because if someone is looking me up, this page will pop up right at the top of a Google search and it gives anyone looking at it a quick summary of everything I do, all the projects I'm involved in, where you can find me on the internet, how to contact me, and it's also the place where my beginner sewing resource lives as well. If you're a beginning sewer, check that out. It'll help a lot annikavictoria.com. Anyway, setting up the main page of my website with Squarespace literally took me like an hour. I don't really know any coding or programming at all, but I didn't need to in order to make a beautiful looking website. I like my website a lot, can you tell? Squarespace has a whole bunch of gorgeous designer templates so you can just choose one and start building your own website with it. And one of the best parts is that I can just leave the website as is without having to worry about patching or maintaining. It. And the one time that I had to use customer support, well, it was my fault because I got a big head and thought I'd try and add some code, but I did it wrong. But Squarespace's 24 seven customer support were so helpful and they fixed my problem straight away. Just what I would expect from an award-winning customer service. If you're a musician, artist, or creator of any type, or if you wanted to open your own online store selling your own handmade goods, Squarespace is the way to go. You can even transfer third-party domains to Squarespace if you're not happy with your current service provider. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Annika and you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you Squarespace and thank you all for supporting the companies that support this channel. And thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Along with the sponsor of this episode, this channel is also supported by you. My wonderful patrons on Patreon help to keep this channel running and I wouldn't be where I am today without their support. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. To become a supporter and to get access to some exclusive Patreon only content, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria. And happy holidays.